apes apes together strong the more apes we have the stronger we are after being squashed like play-doh for the better part of my playthrough i was fed up of being pushed around and realized i needed numbers but not just numbers alone i needed capable fighters able to actually do things other than get vaporized every time an enemy looks at them in the last video i set up my base and now i needed to populate it Driven by my untamable sieve for the slave raiders, I took what little money I had left and searched under rocks, up in trees, and even in lakes for any signs of someone down enough on their luck and desperate enough to relocate my miserable little base. I had hired near everybody from the surrounding bars and outposts and was beginning to feel like the well of potential recruits had dried up. I began to wonder if it was even possible to hire enemies if I imprisoned them, as this would solve my problems. A quick Google search revealed to me that it was not. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? It was at this point I installed the recruitable prisoners mod by Nano Giraffe and Larval. Great mod, go check it out. And began to start scraping half rotted corpse up from the gate where my other squad members had skewered them with their turrets. Then I took them away to my creepy prisoner tower and convinced them to join my cause in exchange for some moldy old bread. Additionally, I collected some new members the good old fashioned way, starting with the safest and comfiest area on the map. The Fog Islands. Getting in was surprisingly easy due to the sick ride I managed to find parked on the outskirts of the fog zone. The hardest challenge came from navigating the thick, milky fog in order to find Mongrel. Blinded by the dense mist, my luck ran out and I totaled my vehicle against a rock. Luckily, I crashed close to Mongrel and managed to stumble my way into town and introduce myself to the townspeople while I lost blood at a catastrophic rate. While in town, I hired a couple of lowly goons, those being Shike and Beep. With my new thugs by my side, it was time to leave the Fog Islands. Should be as easy as it was getting in, right? About 30 seconds after I'd left Mongrel, Beep was knocked out and taken off into the fog, and saving him meant leaving Shike alone to get abducted. Struggling pursued on for what felt like hours before I was able to free both of them and narrowly escape the Fog Islands without losing a single limb. Once again, I managed to find a vehicle on the outskirts of the Fog Islands. Admittedly a much less cool one, but a vehicle all the same. Traumatized by my experience, I quickly drove home and dumped the duo back at my base before going out searching again for more potential squad members. There was one small problem, however. I was running low on cash. What? No money? Yeah! Sir, Up to this point I'd been relying on Molly's high weaponsmithing skills to craft katanas for all the weebs inhabiting Kenshi. While immensely profitable, it meant that I had to ensure she was constantly in the base crafting swords in order to maintain a continuous income stream. This would have been fine if not for the fact that Molly was the only member of my squad capable of travelling to distant cities to hire new recruits without being annihilated by a Lovecraftian creature about 10 seconds into their journey. As easy as it was to rely on Molly's MCU tier plot armor to carry my squad, in order to properly grow my base and my group, things had to change. It was time to turn the rest of my squad into the chads they were meant to be. The main skills I wanted to level were athleticism, strength, and the general melee weapon skill. This combination would allow me to optimize the survivability of my characters. Similarly, training their general combat skills meant they would be able to handle themselves if their running ability wasn't enough to distance themselves from the ghouls, demons, warlocks and wizards bumbling around the landscape. Initially, I started training them manually by gathering a small group and then made them run around in small circles in order to level my athleticism. However, this was too time and effort intensive and didn't yield the giga results I was looking for. I needed to automate. I assigned Beep to the armor crafting bench and forced him at gunpoint to produce endless pieces of crab armor for days on end without sleep until I was finally able to equip full crab armor on my entire squad. Any excess armor I made, I could sell. Thanks to Mr. Schwartz, at Blooper on Twitter for letting me know how lucrative selling armor could be. All that was left to do now was to slap a Gucci logo on them and sell them for ungodly prices on eBay. 
Next, I moved all my miners from mining this iron node here over to this one here. This meant that they had to travel more, back and forth, in order to deliver raw iron to the refiner. With their inventories overloaded from the weight of their crab armor, and with a painfully long trek back and forth, it meant that they were constantly leveling their strength. However, while the problem of other factions raiding my base wasn't as bad as at my old base, I still had my fair share of dickheads to deal with. Namely, the Dragon Ninjas, who got one sniff of my delicious wheat as they were passing by and just had to have some of that good, good bread. In their pursuits for my warm and doughy goodness, they were persistent enough to knock out my entire squad and run off with my juicy loafs before we regained consciousness. This left us starving and required me to take Molly away from her sword making to go pick up some groceries from the local Tesco's in order to feed my group while the bread supply replenished. Threatened with starvation, I began to panic. <coughs> then I thought, Good. While risky, these fights quickly leveled the overall combat skill of my characters. Naturally, this problem evened itself out as my group grew. New recruits were trained on dummies in order to provide them with baseline combat skills. Increased strength and size meant that the dragon ninjas soon faded into a non-problem. Athleticism was now my main issue. Although my crab armor strat worked well for strength, it meant I couldn't effectively level the running speed of my group. Whilst I gradually found my feet with my base, I was presented a much more significant opportunity. While Molly was out hunting around towns and bars for new recruits, she stumbled across the Walter White, along with his trusty partner, Jesse Pinkman. Now, I know what you're thinking. Slippin'? Did this really happen? Is this real? Yes. Yes. Trust trust me, please. Please trust me. A quick chat between Molly and Walter led to an agreement. The two would cook their special goods for Molly in exchange for a cut of the profits and a place to stay. And so before long, the trio were back at the base. They built some hemp farms and got to work cooking. Before long, my base was overflowing with katanas, crab armor, and hashish. Having just returned from collecting Walt and Jesse, I immediately sent Molly back out to the swamp to sell my goods, much to the dismay of my PC, which was now running louder and hotter than I've ever seen it do before. That is not fucking good. But after persevering, I made it a shark and unloaded my epic loot. Armed with some more loose change, I went and hired some more freaks to add to my collection. Some of my favorites being Miss Gigamilk. There's also this uh, hive of thing, uh, which looks like it's spiced with a hammerhead shark. Um, the, this thing. Uh, what have I created? <laughs> Once again, I was in shark to sell off my goods, but I also ran into Hamut, an avid anti-slaver who told me his edgy backstory. I do too. The slavers, they took somebody from me. Somebody very special to me. Branded her body and put her to work in that stinking hell hole of a mine. This needs to stop. We need to stand up and fight this barbaric slave culture. I plan to visit the slavers outpost, but I need allies. Who did they take? My wife. For as long as I live I will never give up on finding retribution for her. And I'll make them pay for what they've done for the life that they've stolen from her. I want to wipe those slaver scum off the face of the planet. I was moved. Touched. And so I set him up in the forge and forced him to become the new swordsmith in order to replace Molly. From here he would whittle away his life, endlessly making katanas to sell to drug dealers, bandits and lowlifes. Truly a noble girl. My reliance on Molly was waning, but there was one last box I had to tick, that being to find a new runner to take items to sell in other settlements. Looking through my character stats, I noticed that Shira Shantol had a decently high athleticism to strength ratio. Because of her peg legs, she was the slowest character, but her greatest weakness soon became her greatest strength, as a lack of legs meant that I could replace her bargain bin metal poles with high level scout legs, making her the fastest character in the squad. With all of Molly's roles now outsourced to other members of the squad, all that was left to do was to renovate Molly's throne room, sell my garbage, and expand. I checked in on Beep, Hamut, Walt, and Jesse, collected their products, and headed out for base, ready to make some money.
we had done it. One trillion great British pounds. Cases and cases of cold hard cash. Finally, accepted by my gigabillionaire pals, we now have the connections, resources and cash to finally begin the fight back against the slavers and the United Cities. With the war room now set up, we could begin to plan our attack. All the pieces were falling into place. All we had to do now was continue to expand while hiring and training troops. So there we have it. Base set up, characters safe and at decent levels of skill. We have money, food and enough manufacturing processes to maintain a steady income. Any upgrades I wanted to make would have to be done soon because once we initiate a war, there will be no going back. As it currently stands, I believe I have a shot at taking on the slave farm. But we shall see next time. Hello, it's me, Slippin. I just wanted to say a big thank you for 500 subs. It's been a lot of fun getting to this point and I'm incredibly happy people are liking the content I'm making. All of your comments have just been so insanely kind. It really does make my day when someone says something nice about my videos, so, so thank you. We're also doing a giveaway of five copies of Kenshi at 1K, so tell your dad, tell your mum, Tell your grandma, tell the ants outside. Also, check out this video here. I'll link it in the description below. It'll tell you the rules and how to enter. Let me know what kind of stuff you want to see, what you like, what you didn't like. I do read every single comment, so it doesn't go unnoticed. Thanks again, and bye for now. More content soon.